Okay, so today we're going to talk about utility software as part of uh, overall system software. Quick start for you, three anagrams. The first two are one word, the final one is technically two. So the first word is Windows. The second one, Rad Dino, is uh, Android. And Mr. Choose is Chrome OS. So three examples of operating systems there, just as a recap from previous lesson. So specification content, uh, we're looking for the purpose and functionality of utility software and looking at sort of three main types. Whilst there are other types of utility software, for OCR J277, we're looking at encryption software, defragmentation, and data compression, some of which you'd have heard of and previously sort of looked at earlier in the unit. So what is utility software? Now, ultimately, utility software is software that serves the purpose of maintaining the computer. So you can refer to it as almost housekeeping, and it might be things like uh, maintaining the computer's hard drive. It might be uh, organizing files so that, and compressing them, as we've mentioned, and encryption for security purposes, amongst other things. So encryption software um, is basically software that is used to disguise the contents of a file so that it can't be understood by an unauthorized user. And we've looked at this previously um, when we looked at uh, software security um, earlier in this unit. And it is that kind of idea that your software will protect itself from being understood. So you could have potentially sensitive data that you might encrypt that would scramble it up and disguise the data in that file so that someone else wouldn't be able to view it and understand it. Now, again, I'm gonna emphasize that point that it's about the idea that someone won't be able to understand the contents of that file and it's not necessarily the case that it makes it unable to be read. Someone can still read the contents of that file. It will just be scrambled up to a point where no one would be able to make sense of it. And then defragmentation. So defragmentation, I've got two images and I'll make reference to these um, as I sort of introduce this sort of area. But defragmentation is the process of reorganizing or organizing the data that's stored on your hard drive uh, with a view to speed up the retrieval of that data. So when you add files to your hard drive, they may not necessarily be added to a single block. So looking at the image on the bottom right, you can see that the yellow, red, blue, and so forth are, are sort of fragmented or divided over the course of the hard drive. And with these files being separated in this way, it can take quite a while for the computer to actually retrieve all of those yellow blocks of data as they're spread out over the hard drive. So defra defragmentation is the idea that this data is reorganized in a way that makes it much, much quicker to read and write from the hard drive. Now this fragmentation happens um, over the course of time. So what happens is as you read and write data to your hard drive, you might be adding files, deleting files and so forth. Your computer will fill up the emptiest gaps first. So if, for example, if we look at this uh, image on the bottom right where things are fragmented, if we deleted whatever it is that the yellow file represents, that would leave gaps that are dotted across the hard drive. And as you add more data to the hard drive, it will just start filling in these gaps first. And you'll notice that eventually over the course of time, as I say, things get spread out quite far. And then this process of defragmentation is reorganizing of those files. And you can see in this animation on the bottom left, that process happening where the files are reorganized on the hard drive. This means, as I say, that the hard drive doesn't, or the computer doesn't necessarily need to scan the entire hard drive to retrieve all of the files are then stored sequentially. So it means if, for example, we were looking for this red file here, the hard drive doesn't then need to be um, searched any further than where those files are, are located. And then data compression. Again, we've looked at data compression before, uh, earlier in the unit, but we'll just sort of recap this. So data compression is the idea of trying to reduce a file size um, through applying compression algorithms. And there's different types of compression algorithms. Uh, the main sort of focus we're looking at is lossy and lossless compression. And if you remember that lossy compression is where some data is lost when it's compressed and it can't be restored uh, when it is decompressed. You tend to get a much greater, smaller file size with lossy compression because data is actually being removed. Whereas with lossless compression, you're able to restore the data that you've compressed to its original form. Um, and obviously with that, you end up with a smaller uh, reduction in data um, when you do lossless compression, but it's most appropriate for things that you can't afford to lose data on. Um, 